Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a cute little gift bag, which I'm going to show you in a minute, but I just thought I would share um, some bits and pieces with you first. Um, I've just had my parents stay with me for three weeks, which has been amazing. Um, and I shared a photo, it must have been about three weeks ago now, over on my Facebook page of the huge craft stash that my mum um, brought over from the UK for me. And this is just some of it here, and I um, I just thought I'd talk through a little bit. So in the UK, we have um, the pound shops, and we've got one that's called Pound Land. And they have slowly, that I've noticed over the last 18 months, been um, expanding their craft department. Um, they had sometimes, it was like discontinued branded, branded stuff, um, and just little things like embellishments, um, foam adhesive, some card stocks and things like that. But recently they have um, launched this new collection, Love to Craft, which is their um, craft range here. Um, and my mum saw it in the shop and she showed me a picture and she said, do you, do you like this? And I said, yeah, go for it. So everything here is a pound each. Um, and they really are good. So you get, so this is called Papillon. And you've got bows, you've got resin flowers. I mean, she literally just raided the store. I don't think there was anything left after my mum had been there. Um, buttons, pegs, sequins, adhesive pearls, um, paper doilies, some more buttons, some little wooden frames, and then the paper pack. Now, from what I know, there's only six by six paper packs. Um, and also, Every pound shop is, or pound um, land, sorry, is different. Some are very big stores, but some are very small. Some may only stock just that, for example. Um, and like a lot of them, once it's gone, it's gone. You have to be quick with these things. So I was really fortunate for my mum to see all of this um, when she did. Um, and that's why she kind of just, just grabbed it. So it all matches really really lovely and then I'll just show you a close-up here um, of the papers so you've got butterflies, birdcage, peas, roses and just nice patterns and stuff so six by six eight designs 24 sheets 120 gsm it's very thin it's just like origami paper um, so don't you know go running in there thinking you're going to get um, this all in cardstock because it's not but that doesn't mean to say that they won't eventually I'm sure they're probably already evolving this and making more stuff and it's also acid and lingam free so yeah I've not got anything bad to say about it I think it's really 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 nice so that's the papillon then they also have this let's celebrate so again you've got the buttons you've got the bows You've got these little sentiments here. Um, you've got all these more pearl embellishments. I've got two paper packs here and some resin roses there. The one thing I will say is they do not go. <laughs> so these are the sequins. So you can see the sequins of the papillon match really lo lovely. And then these ones, they've just randomly given you some like tealy green and a really really kind of I guess deep pink but that's not in this the colors are what's in the the kind of um, balloons there but they they don't match at all um, so I'm not quite sure what's happened there but you can see it really st does stick out um, but again here's the paper pack really really is lovely um, balloons I love the bunches of balloons there now dare I say this is very very similar to trim craft when they do their collections so I again I don't know I haven't been asked to do this or anything but they may have something to do with this I don't know but if I was trim craft dove craft it's all under the same umbrella first edition I would be a little bit miffed if I wasn't <laughs> included in this because it is even packaged the same and Trimcraft do buttons, they do the pearl embellishments, they do the resin, they do even tag sentiment toppers just like this. So yeah, I don't know. Please comment, anybody, just kind of educate me a bit more if I'm getting this completely wrong. But as a consumer and someone who shops both brands, this is very, very, very similar. Um, even like doilies and the pegs, they always do pegs. 
with their collections. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so everything here is a pound a piece. The buttons, I don't think there's anything that's not really, these are a pound. Same, it's the same price and same ones that you get in the range. A lot of this is, you know, comes from factories and then the companies just brand them. So um, you will see very, very similar um, like that. So yeah, so that's the little kind of haul there of just this stuff that my mum brought over for me and I'll share other bits and pieces. So let me just get rid of all of this. Okay, so this is the project I'm going to show you today. So it's just this little kind of handbag, little treat bag, and it's got a really nice little fastening. So you basically just slide this out and then it just opens up like so. Okay, so you could put some little cellophane um, chocolates in there or even chocolates in a cellophane bag because cellophane chocolates sound disgusting. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, and I've done it as one long piece of ribbon. I've just put a knot there um, just so you can kind of open and close it easily. And then you just slide this piece back in like so. And it keeps it all nice and shut. And I think it's a really cute, nice little treat bag. So um, yeah, it doesn't fold completely flat, but it's pretty narrow anyway, so it's easy to store away. And um, yeah, they're, they're relatively quick to kind of knock up. So that's using the papillon. So that's one of the papers there, and that's using one of the bows. This is from my own stash, just a broken piece from a piece of jewelry. And they're the little pearl um, adhesive pearls there as well from the um, collection. So yeah, okay. So this is what you're gonna need. So let's come on down, there we go. So you need one piece of 11 by eight and a quarter. Okay, so we're using the whole piece and I'll go through all these other pieces as we go through the video. So first of all, scoring along the 11 inch side, you want to score at four and three quarters and six and a quarter. Then you're going to rotate it onto the eight and a quarter inch side and you're going to score at two inches and six and a quarter. Then you're going to go back again along the 11 inch side and you're then going to score at four and three eighths just down to that first score line. And then at six and five eighths again just down to that first score line. So you're creating a little three eighth of an inch kind of um, tab on each sides of this square here that we've done. Then just flip your card and do that again. So four and three eighths just down to the first score line and six and five eighths just down to the first score line. Okay, these are going to be cut lines. We're going to cut down there and we're going to cut up here. So we're going to remove all of this. Then just go back and again along the eight and a quarter inch side, just with the thinner point of my stylus here, I'm just going to put a little notch. So just a little kind of indent into the card at two and three quarters and at five and a half. And again, flip the card and do that two and three quarters and five and a half. Then the last thing to do is again, go back along the 11 inch side and at five and a half, which is your center point, just do a score line down to that first score line again. Okay, and then rotate this time. Don't flip it because you do want it that way. Again, five and a half, just down to that first score line. And that will allow us to be able to just squeeze in the sides there, okay? So that is what you should have. So up here, you can see that's your, your um, this is your base here, these two long score lines. So this is our base of our card. You've got the square here with the, halfway five and a half inch score line and you've got these two little three eighth of an inch tabs each side okay just bring that one up a bit more right that's where you should be um, then you're going to need two pieces of pattern paper which is four by four and a half okay and we are going to create this shape and that is going to be our main decoration our main mat on the front and the backs then to make the kind of flap over the top you need a piece of one and a half by four and along the four inch side you want to score at one inch okay now you can round off the edges if you want which is what I did there this time I'm going to leave this one square because I just want to see how it looks and I'm going to actually mat and layer a few more colors because this one I done in white um, which I like but I've obviously done pink with this one so I'm using a white tab I'm then using a, a pink colored mat which is one and a quarter by two and three quarters. 
and that's going to go on top okay and now that's all I've done for this one here but I just rounded off the edges but I'm now going to put my pattern paper on top of that one so I'm adding this extra piece which is one by two and a half and that is going to go on top like so so I'm just creating a slightly different um, kind of pattern I guess with this one um, then this is the little kind of um, lock that we're going to slide that tab in and the white piece is two and a half by three oh by half an inch yeah just under but half an inch will be fine and then I've literally just freehand cut this strip to go on top which I've already stuck down which is a quarter of an inch by two and a quarter okay and that's just already stuck on top so I just didn't want to lose it and then I've got my ribbon already here which is roughly oh gosh it's going off 22 because I'm going to knot it and it obviously goes all the way around so it's 22 by sorry 22 you're looking at 32 inches but just hold fire before you cut that until I go to put mine together uh, okay so that's all the scoring done so let's just get rid of the board and then come back in with our card here so what you want to do is just burnish all of your main score lines so the two longer ones then your base okay and then all you'll be left with is these center ones here and these ones so all the ones that you only scored to these score lines here that's what you'll be left with that you can't burnish right now so let me grab my um, sorry if you can hear my squeaky squeaky chair <laughs> I think I need to um, need to get that sorted yeah look that's really bad I'm going to try not to move now okay so what we want to do first of all is I think it's going to be easiest if we just cut down the outer um, so where the tabs are outside of the main square okay so you can see the ones I've cut down so this is going to be our little tabs which we're going to stick inside so this is this bit here that we're doing okay so I'm just cutting down them and then I'm going to cut all the way down here now when you see me doing this there will be a quicker way but I'm doing it in this step by step just to you know so that everybody can do it I don't want to I'll just try and keep them as simple as I can so just go and cut these squares out and the reason I'm doing it this way as well is it gives you nice pieces of scrap okay so they're ready now to go away in your scrap drawer and then again I'm just going to cut this one and that one okay so you'll have four nice pieces now you can put them away in your scrap drawer then you'll be left with this kind of shape so now we need to create that kind of sloped side that almost triangular look so where we've done those little kind of notches those little indents you can see just here and here just grab your ruler and a pencil okay so from the little notched part you're going to draw a pencil line down to this corner here Okay, so from the little notch down to there, and then again on that other side, like so, and again on this side. Now we're going to cut down those. So these ones you need to be really, really neat because this is all going to be exposed. I'm cutting away my pencil mark, but if there is any pencil, then you can obviously just rub that out. So, you know, you can do the pencil mark and then cut that whole piece out so this piece is still attached to the scrap but then you'd have to cut that bit off anyway because I don't know if anybody else is like me but I like my scrap pieces to all be straight and nice and neat I wouldn't put that in like that into my scrap drawer it drives me nuts there's a little bit of a, an OCD there with that anyway so now I'm going to cut down this one so again I'm just just slightly removing the pencil mark there like so okay I've just realized I've actually done the pencil down to the wrong corner so you actually need to do your pencil mark it's fine it's not causing me any problems but your pencil mark you don't want to do it to this corner you want to do it to here so if I for example just cut that away like just cut down there but you want to do your pencil mark down to your actual score line this baseline here so it 
literally doesn't really make too much of a difference. Um, it just gives you a nicer finish on the front. So you can see there. So that's where I did my pencil mark too when that was in. Now we're coming down to that one there. Okay, so you're doing it down to this this your base score line. Okay. Hopefully I've not made that more confusing than it needs to be. And then just again, just cut very nicely all the way down. And then what you can do is take a little wedge off of your tab, like so. See what I've done? So from that notch there, I've gone all the way down to this piece, that corner. We're going to keep this. So again, with this side here, like so, and then I'm going to cut a little wedge, and a little wedge there, and then I'm just going to go and just very slightly, I won't edit this out, you can see if you have just done what I did, if you were crafting along, all you've got to do is just redo that pencil line. Okay, so we're going right down there, so I'm just going to again very carefully kind of stagger it. I'm going to come down a little bit further. Okay, like so. So it just goes to show, you know, we all make little errors and stuff, but most of the time they are easily rectified. So now I'm going to just grab my rubber here and just, just take off any, any bits there that you can see on the side. You see I'm really concentrating. <laughs> I've got a bit more here. There we go. So then you can just burnish those over again. And you can see the shape that you should have. And then these ones here, you want to just create a kind of um, a valley fold, just slightly, just so it kind of bends in like that. There we go. So then you will have these two pieces here. So I've already done one, and that is going to fit inside like so. And you can see it gives me a nice border. So to get that one, what you need is, this is a piece of four by four and a half, along the four inch side, okay, the four and a half is your length, this is the width of the four, so this is going, yeah, this way. Um, this would be the top, so if you've got directional paper, what I'm doing now, you want to do at the top, okay, so that you've got your pattern facing the right way. And basically, you just want to come in three quarters of an inch and put a little pencil mark. And so in this case, I'm coming in at three quarters of an inch and then three and a quarter, okay? And then the same way that we just cut on the bag, we're then gonna do a pencil mark from that pencil mark down to the bottom corners there. So the left and right hand side. Okay, so that's what you will have. And then you just wanna nice, nicely cut those. Don't matter about the pencil marks, obviously this is on the back, so you're not gonna see it. Make sure it's nice and neat. So, so I've already done my other one, so you'll need two pieces like that, and then this one will sit nicely in there. Okay, so go and get those two all stuck down. Then you want to start to stick your edges. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of my wet glue just on the tab there, like so. Come up a little bit higher there, actually. There we go. And then you're going to bring it in here and you're going to line it up so it's got that nice sloped side. So you want it to just marry up nicely with the edge there. Just turn that on its side. Okay, you can see what I've done there. So again with this side, bring that one in and up and just bring it right across until you get it nice and lined up. So that's how it should look. So again, just repeat that with the back. Okay, and then you can just, you can see there when you squeeze it, it will come in along that score line that we made there. Okay, so there, we've got that coming along really nicely. So next we just need to finish these bits here. So with the tab here where you scored along that side at one inch, just burnish that one over. Make sure it's nice and lined up, which mine isn't. Do that one again. There we go. And then I'm going to pop all these mats and layers. So this is the first one. 
like so and then choose what's the front or your back you may have different paper you may have one side that's maybe a little bit wonky like we do I know I'm always slightly off on one side sometimes so then I'm going to pop that oh I know what I forgot to do as well we've got a nice little piece of patterned see on the back there I've put a little piece just in that so we need to do one for there as well so I'll go through that in a minute but first of all just pop some glue on the inside okay and then you want to make sure line the top up with the score line bring it over and just make sure you've got equal sides here and then at the same time bring this all over so you can make sure it's all nicely lined up with the front which it is you can see now when that comes down how that looks okay and then this piece is going to be like I said I kind of like lock which is going to go over the top like that and I'm going to obviously get that all decorated so just pop a little blob of glue on each end and I would say you want to come up um, I've come up about an inch from the bottom again I'm just eyeballing it so make sure it's all lined up and it's entirely up to you if you want to go higher you can but I think that's about right and again just make sure you've got even distance from the left and the right hand side there because that will all add to your finished look and you can see there how that's going to come together it looks really really nice so now I'm going to see what decoration I want to use so I'm going to use some of the lighter coloured pearls here um, I've got that drawer of bits and pieces here I've got my heat gun on um, and I have, oh, I have got one more of them I don't know whether to do the same again I guess I should because they're nice and matching so I'm going to stick, let's check that it's nice and hot, so let's pop this one, a little bead of glue there, and you're only sticking the decoration on that strip there, do not stick it on the piece underneath, so again I'm just making sure mine's all nicely lined up, like so. And then I will add my bows. So again, sorry about the rustling. So I know that can be quite annoying in videos. Don't know whether to do the light or the dark. Let's have a little look because it has got a darker. Oh no, I don't like that one. Let's try this one. Yeah, I think that one will work fine. So I'm actually going to end up doing the same design that I did on that one with this one here. So again, just pop a bead of glue on the back of the bow and that's going to stick on top. What I might do actually now as well, I think the bow, the centre of the bow needs a little something, so I'm going to put another one of these beads on there as well. So let's do tiny tiny ones um, that one and that one and then let's do this bigger one in the centre of there I probably need to put some hot glue with that as well there you go you can see so let's just add bigger one on this one. I think it just kind of finishes it. There we go, it does, it looks much better. And now we need to do, so you can keep it like that and then what you could do is add some card handles if you wanted to but that looks nice just as it is. But I'm now going to add my little eyelets and the ribbon. Again I like that metal work and it just kind of works well with this metal decoration that I've got here. So again I've got my eyelets so I'm just bringing out four of the silver ones which I'm running out of I'm not using the gold at all so maybe I need to start working the gold colors in because all I seem to be going to is the silver but I've got those I've got my pliers so all I did was just take that out and just find the I just kind of kept it about a quarter quarter inch down from the top and in from the side 
just be careful it does crinkle up ever so slightly because you are working with the corner but you can get away with it and that one by the time you put the pliers in it does kind of flatten itself back out again like so and then just get them all stuck down so I'm just going to feed these through and squash them all in okay so that's my eyelets done and then again I'm going to let me just see roughly what length I did use I think it was that because by the time you do the knot yes yeah, there's not much in it so the length I gave you is about right but you can obviously make it shorter or longer it's entirely up to you and then you're just going to feed it through the front into the back and then back around in through the back and then leave it there and then this other front this one here sorry the other end you're going to take through the other side of the front and then get them together tie in a knot so, and just cut off the excess there and then the knot will stay in the middle so just play around until they're nice and even and then this piece here I mean you can what I should do with that one is just kind of curl it a little bit just because it helps slide it in each time because I've got two layers of card on this one I'm just going to move it a little bit more and you can see that it just slides in nicely like so Get rid of that knot, it should be inside. There we go. I don't think that's super cute. I might need to make that knot a bit smaller. I don't like it like that. There we go. It's hidden. But how cute. I think they are so lovely. You can see there, closer up. So that's that one. And there's the other one. So two really cute little treat bags. These are going to be give, given to some friends with some chocolates in. And um, yeah. I, uh, I love them, I think they're really cute, I love the shape and the papers, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you those and have a play around with them and I think they are really, really cute. So this is the Papillon papers from Poundland, yeah, Pound World's closed down, Poundland, <laughs> got to remember, we've got so many of them. Anyway, there you go, hope you've enjoyed it and you can get hold of some of those supplies. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye!